Hi, I'm Kim Geis, Assistant Director for Curatorial Services at the National World War II Museum. And I'm standing in the Road to Tokyo Gallery, and I'd like to showcase some of our prisoner of war artifacts here from the Pacific Theater. So um, artifacts, you know, these, these may look like small items, um, but each tells a pretty big story. And they're, you know, what the, art, what the piece says about the experience um, can be really incredible. And what we can say about it on a label is often, you know, very small. So to be able to tell the stories of some of these pieces um, a little bit further is pretty exciting. And so these items here are from Pacific Theater POWs. And the Japanese held around 27,000 American POWs. And out of that number, um, 11,000 more than 11,000 um, died in captivity. So that was a death rate of around 40%. And that was radically different than um, POWs who were held in the European theater because um, the Japanese did not um, adhere to or afford the POWs any of the um, rights afforded by the Geneva Convention. And so they endured brutal treatment, beatings, starvation, um, forced labor, often you know, for a very long time. The average length of captivity in the Pacific Theater was three years. And so that's an incredibly long time for people to go without food and, um, and nourishment. And so the pieces that survive from the Pacific Theater, the artifacts from POWs, are, are very different in character from, um, from those in the European theater. And um, so, but it's amazing that any material survived. Um, but we do, as you'll see behind me, have some material that, um, that people managed to keep while captive and to bring home with them. So we're fortunate to have those in the collection. And they include things like, um, like journals and letters, but the medium, the surface that they're written on is often very different. Um, any little scrap of paper that you could scrounge was precious. And so Journals from the Pacific Theater POWs are often written on toilet paper, on cigarette wrappers, on any little piece of paper that they could, um, could find. And so um, in this case, we have a journal and notes from a Dutch prisoner, actually, and most of our artifacts are from Americans, but we do have some from um, allies. And we have um, a little can of small little notes written on scraps of paper. So that's just amazing that that survived. We also have uh, other things that people kept. Um, prisoners of war tended to, um, to keep with them and to bring home. Um, and this is very telling, I think, of the experience overall. Um, people kept the utensils that they used to eat. So um, in this case, we have a pair of chopsticks. Of course, those, that, those were used in the Pacific Theater. The main little nourishment that POWs often received um, was rice. And so chopsticks were used and, and kept by POWs, in this case, um, Irving Strobing. And, um, but also, you know, forks, spoons, bowls, plates, and canteens. So having access to water was not always possible. And so any little bit of water that you could save was precious. In this case, there's a canteen from Colonel Jesse Trawick, who was a fairly important figure in, um, on the POW scene in the Pacific. He was the duty officer, the aide to General Jonathan Wainwright. And so he was tasked with 
some with delivering some of the surrender messages. And we have um, Colonel Trawick's canteen here that he has etched um, with a message, Battling Bastards of Bataan. We also have his West Point ring. So Colonel Trawick was in the West Point class of 1924. He was actually born in 1900. And so he wasn't a youngster, and that was, that was fairly typical in terms of POWs in the Pacific. The average age was um, 26, so it was a little higher than POWs in Europe. And then another piece that I'd like to point out in this case is um, a small little note, a letter, that a mother wrote her son. So PO POWs in the Pacific did not receive much mail. Um, they were not, the Red Cross was, was not really allowed into Japanese um, camps. And so any little piece of information that you could get from home was extremely important. N just knowing, um, just for families to know that you were alive was also very important. And so um, there's a note in this case and it's really short and at first glance it might seem why would a mother who hasn't seen her son in years just write this tiny little message it seems really um, simple and you know maybe unimportant but you know I hope this reaches you and hope you're well you know love your mom and so families of POWs in the Pacific were instructed to keep their messages extremely simple 25 words or less, and to type their messages or write them in block print because these messages had to undergo censorship by Americans and by the Japanese. And if there was any reason that they could be um, thrown out or discounted, they would be. So keeping them short, simple, and um, tight allowed, you know, it, it increase their chances that they would actually make it through, and that's extremely important. Um, so, you know, these notes were like a lifeline to home, and that was a, um, you know, saving grace for many POWs in the Pacific Theater who underwent this terrible experience for a prolonged period of time for most of the war.